Hello, welcome to Church at Home for the uh, fourth Sunday in the Easter season, 2023. Father Ed here. Father Michael. As you can see, we are on a <laughs> skeletal crew, yeah. crew, crew here. Uh, Father Joshua is away, and you know, uh, Jim Livingston, our intern, has returned to the seminary. So it's just us, just us. us two kids here. So, and Bella. Uh, and Bella, as you will probably hear, he's... Uh, playing with his Active. toys. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, this is traditionally called uh, Good, Shepherd, Good Shepherd, Sunday. Shepherd Sunday. Right. And Father Michael was reminding me something about our church that all of you are probably aware of. Right. So on the um, altar, we have a beautiful depiction of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Um, and it's quite striking. I, I hope this sounds familiar to you and that you'll pay special attention to it uh, this weekend. And it's actually... Um, it's the Good Shepherd is the oldest depiction of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus as the Good Shepherd actually predates the crucifix, which is probably the most, you know, common now Christian or Catholic uh, depiction or symbol for Jesus. But uh, the Good Shepherd is actually is actually older. Right. Yeah. Not and now that Father Michael's reminding me of this. I did. I was familiar with the fact that uh, the association and the, and the acceptance, if you will, by the Christian Church of the crucifixion as an important symbol, uh, certainly didn't happen until uh, the third or fourth century of Christianity. So um, I had also known that the fish, you know, mm -hmm. because Jonah, as Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days, uh, oftentimes in uh, Christian calligraphy in the catacombs, they found a picture of a, a, a whale. And um, so, yeah, so uh, Jesus the Good Shepherd, uh, and it is um, not only most ancient, it's probably because it's most central. Um, when we hear the scriptures of this weekend about uh, Jesus as a shepherd, um, we see it as, you know, he's like the, you know what I mean, the universal shepherd. He, uh, he came from heaven on behalf of God and... Um, uh, came for the lost sheep of Israel. You know, you, we've heard him say that. Um, and so uh, we're talking about God's flock. And, you know, the prophet Ezekiel, centuries before Jesus, um, he uh, referred to the uh, priestly class uh, as, uh, you know, bad shepherds and evil shepherds, wicked shepherds. And that God even said, I will come and shepherd them myself. Yeah. Which he did. Which, <laughs> which he did. Which he did. So <clears throat> in Jesus, of course, we see uh, God's ultimate act of shepherding. And uh, um, and so uh, Michael was also, Father Michael was also reminding me of another image of what is the tool, if you will, or one of the ways uh, that God has um, uh, saved the flock in Jesus, and it had something to do with Bishop Barron. Oh, certainly. So um, all this shepherd imagery, I think Jesus, it, it goes, it predates even Jesus' ministry, obviously, uh, the prophet Ezekiel, but that imagery was probably so pertinent to the people to whom he was speaking that he could easily convey his mission and what God was doing um, by speaking of himself as a shepherd and drawing on that imagery. Um, to that point, um, I don't know where I first heard or saw this, but I know before he was Bishop Barron, I heard Father Barron tell a story about a trip of his to the Holy Land where he, he was there in the, the place of Jesus and it, shepherding is still uh, a big part of, of life there. <clears throat> And he saw two, um, two shepherds, each bringing their flock uh, towards each other, walking down a road, about to converge. And sure enough, the, the, as the shepherds passed each other, the, the flocks intermingled. And now all the sheep are just sort of mixing together, and you can't tell who's who. And Father Baron thought, oh no, this is going to be a disaster. But as the two shepherds continued to, to pass on, and the flocks started to separate, the shepherds would call to the sheep. The same way you might call to a, a dog who right. eventually knows your voice. And right. sure enough, the sheep separated themselves and 
followed the follow the right shepherd, followed the sound of the voice with which they were familiar. Uh, and so this dawned on Father Brian, like, oh my gosh, this is exactly what Jesus means when he says, my sheep hear my voice and know me and my, they follow me. Uh, it's drawing on that imagery. And as, uh, as uh, Father Michael was t- saying, telling this story, I'm reminded that, um, you know, sometimes we wonder, well, why did uh, God have to become a human being? And uh, one uh, justification based on this uh, story would be that uh, a bunch of human beings had a hard time responding to God's voice until uh, God spoke with a, a human voice. And so, you know, in Jesus, we can not just in his voice, but in his form and in his life, we can recognize uh, a familiarity with um, our human calling. And so, you know, we're more able, we have a a better aptitude to respond to God in the Christian... uh, um, In the Incarnation. In the Incarnation. uh, because, uh, you know, in the letter to the Hebrews says, in the fullness of time, God finally, after having spoken to us in fragmentary mm-hmm. in many ways, he finally spoke to us in his son. And, uh, you know, there are many other parables that, you know, the people did not recognize servants and all that kind of stuff. And then the master said, well, I'll send my son. Well, certainly they'll recognize, they'll recognize him. him. And uh, so, uh, so this is a beautiful image. And so... Uh, we might, um, on this uh, Good Shepherd Sunday, I don't know, think about um, how are, how attentive are we to the voice of God in the person of Jesus through the Holy Church? Because yes. now uh, we, by the Holy Spirit, are... Um, Should be familiar with that right, voice. Right. And we ought to be able to hear it as he is speaking to us now because you know he never abandons his sheep and uh so especially in the sacraments in the life of the church maybe in the priesthood um once in speaking of never abandoning his sheep i and the image of the good shepherd very deliberately has jesus carrying his sheep over his shoulders as you can see on on our altar and i i think i'm correct in saying that is the one sheep that Jesus put the you know the flock on hold for a second to go after the one strange sheep right. to go get it, and now this poor sheep that's been lost is tired and worn out, and instead of pushing it and prodding it and forcing it back to the uh, to the flock, Jesus carries it, right. picks it up, puts it on his shoulders, and returns this lost sheep right. to the flock. Right. So we are each precious. Uh, in the heart and uh, and the mission of uh, Jesus, our Good Shepherd. So a lot of things to pray about and uh, maybe to amend our lives uh, in response to it all. Yeah, you know, to allow ourselves to be found. Yeah, right. To let Jesus come, yeah. find us, get us, and yeah. bring us back yeah. to where we're supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, I guess we could have the fallacy and living under the fallacy that I'm not I'm not a lost sheep I'm mm-hmm. found and so I think the Lord would say well why don't you find out that part of you that is lost like bellow right like now that rug is about to be lost. Uh, and allow the Lord to find you and me again today mm-hmm. right right happy Easter God bless